Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and today we're going to take a trip back to the basics. The selection and direct selection tools are simply the most fundamental and important tools in Adobe Illustrator. They allow us to grab, move, scale, or alter any element that exists on a page or artboard. So for this piece, we're going to show you how to properly use these tools and how to get the most out of them. No, it's not sexy, but it is necessary. Let's go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, height of 1,000 points, a single artboard, and the RGB color mode. Before we get started, I want to remind you that we are using the Essentials layout. To get to the Essentials layout, go to the top right-hand corner of your screen and select Essentials. I also want to mention that we are using Smart Guides. To enable Smart Guides, select View, Smart Guides, or Control U. Next, I want to mention that on the bottom of the page, we are going to include key command recommendations and various tips and tricks. Like I mentioned, we're focusing on the selection tool and the direct selection tool. But to see what we can do with it, we first need to create a shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool and click anywhere on the screen. We're going to change our rectangle width to 200 points and our height to 200 points as well. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to align it horizontally and vertically. The way we do that is we go to the top of our page and we select horizontal align and vertical align. To make our element most visible, let's change the color. Here's how you change color. At the bottom left hand part of your screen, we'll select our stroke. We'll double click on that and we'll change our stroke to blue. Click anywhere and that blue in the top right hand corner looks just fine for this purpose. Let's increase the stroke to four points. We do that by going to the top left hand part of our page and just increasing our stroke. Let's change our fill to red. Select our fill, double click on that. And we'll go to the top right hand corner of our red palette. Looks good just there. Now that we've got our element selected with our rectangle tool, we can't just click off of our rectangle. If we do that, you'll notice that we just continue to create rectangles. Let's undo by hitting Control Z. So the way to deselect, we'll grab our selection tool and we'll click anywhere off the image. To select our element, we can use our selection tool. We can click on it and now our element is selected. If we want to move our element, we can drag it anywhere on the page we see fit. To deselect, just click off of our element. Let's align our center horizontally and vertically again. We'll do that by selecting our element with our selection tool and then align it horizontally and vertically. Again, we'll deselect, clicking anywhere on the page off of our shape. Note that with our selection tool, we're selecting our entire shape and we can move it around anywhere on the page. Let's undo. Now let's select our direct selection tool. Our direct selection tool certainly allows us to select the shape and deselect the shape. However, it does something different. Our direct selection tool will allow us to select anchor points within a specific shape. As we select them, we can click and drag anchor points to change our shape to how we see fit. I'm going to undo that. We can also select multiple anchor points with our direct selection tool. Let's deselect our shape by clicking off the shape again. We can direct select multiple anchor points by holding our shift key and selecting multiple anchor points. Once we've done that, we can click and drag those two anchor points as we see fit. Once our element is selected, we can also use our directional keys to manipulate our shape. In this case, let's arrow to the right and notice our shape is slowly expanding. If we hold our shift key and arrow to the right, notice how much more quickly our shape expands. That's because when we hold our shift key and use our directional keys, it moves those specific anchor points in 10 point increments. When we don't hold the shift key down, it moves those anchor points in one point increments. Let's undo to get back to our square. 
You do that by repeatedly undoing your action. Easy way to do that is repeatedly hitting Control Z. All right, let's deselect our piece. Another way to select multiple anchor points is dragging across the anchor points that you want to use. For instance, if I want to grab the rightmost anchor points, I'm just going to drag from top to bottom and select those anchor points. At that point, it's easy to manipulate your piece either by dragging or by using your directional keys. Let's arrow to the right five times holding our shift key. Once we've done that, we can do something else. Notice if we zoom into our piece, underneath the anchor points, you see what are called bevel points. Now with our elements still selected and our direct selection tool selected, let's click and drag our bevel points in. Notice that we've transformed our shape again just with direct select, selecting specific anchor points, and clicking and dragging the bevel points. Let's undo that. Once again, you can always deselect your element by clicking anywhere on the screen off the shape. Let's zoom out and bring the whole page into view. Easy way to do that is select Control-0. Note how crucial the selection tool and direct selection tool are in selecting and deselecting your element, plus how crucial they are in doing simple object manipulation. But there's more. Let's undo our changes to bring our shape back to a square. If you're using other tools, you can also access select and direct select by hitting your control key. Let's show you. Let's select our rectangle tool. If we've got a rectangle tool set, you'll notice that we can click and continue making rectangles. However, if we try to deselect a rectangle by clicking off of it, we're only going to be creating more rectangles. Let's undo and get rid of our rectangles. Now with our rectangle tool selected and our shape selected, let's press the control key and see what happens to our rectangle pointer. Right away, it toggles to the direct selection tool where we can click anywhere off of our shape to deselect it. Then we release our control key and it goes right back to the tool that we had originally selected. This is an easy way to deselect an element while still working with a specific tool. Let's try our type tool. We'll grab our type tool, we'll click anywhere on the page and write this as a test. If we want to deselect our type and perhaps create a new type line, we'll select our control key click anywhere on our page off of our piece, and we've deselected it. At that point, we can do the same thing. Let's click again anywhere on our page and write this is a test again. Again, we'll select our control key and deselect our element. Note that our type tool is still active, but we've selected and deselected an element. This is also helpful if we're working in type, for example, and we want to select our rectangle to move it. Once again, we'll select our control key. We'll select our rectangle and drag it to the bottom left. And note that we're right back using our type tool. If we want to deselect our rectangle, press our control key, click anywhere off of our rectangle, and we're back to adding type. Let's undo to bring our rectangle back to the center. And let's go to our rotate tool. If we want to deselect our rectangle and perhaps rotate our type, again, let's select our control key, click anywhere on the page off of our rectangle, and then with our control key still selected, let's select our type element. Now that we've got that, we can click and drag to rotate our piece. Note that if you hold the shift key down while clicking and dragging, your element rotation is restricted to 45 degree increments. With our rotate tool still selected, Let's select our rectangle. Again, we'll hold our control key and click on the rectangle. Next thing we'll do is we'll start dragging in a counterclockwise motion. Let's hold our shift key to restrict our movement again. And let's go to 45 degrees. Let's deselect our square, again, holding our control key. And there you go. One advantage of using the control key, by the way, is we're always going back to the direct selection tool. 
That's a big advantage, for example, in this case, if we want to adjust our shape. Let's hold our control key. Let's click on our rectangle. And you'll notice straight away while we're holding our control key down, not only are our anchor points visible, but so are the bevel points. With our control key still selected, we can click and drag those bevel points in, and we've changed our shape, still using our rotate tool. To deselect again, we'll hold our control key, click off of our shape anywhere. Let's undo the bevel point change. Again, we'll hit control Z to undo. What if we wanted to select specific anchor points while still in the rotate tool? Once again, we hit our control key. We can click off of our shape, and then we can select with our control key still depressed, we can select specific anchor points. We can hold our shift key and our control key down, and we can select anchor points still within the rotate tool. Let's click off of our shape one more time, holding our control key, clicking off of it. This time around, what we're going to do is we're going to alter our shape again with our rotate tool still selected. This time around, we'll hold our shift key along with our control key, and we'll click on the bottom and top anchor points. Now that we've done that, let's release our shift key. So we still have our control key selected, and let's click the bevel point and drag it down towards center. Let's deselect what has now become our leaf, hit our control key, and deselect. Now that we've done that, let's rotate it 45 degrees. Again, hitting our control key, selecting it, releasing our control key, and let's rotate it again 45 degrees. We'll hold our shift key down and rotate clockwise towards the bottom. Once we're done, let's deselect. Let's select our control key, click anywhere on the page, deselect, and we are done. All right, almost forgot. Let's talk about scaling. With a rotate tool still selected, let's press our control key and select our element. Notice that when our control key is depressed, we've got this square or rectangle around our shape. That is our scale area. Now with our control key still selected, we can drag and click on any corner and drag out and our shape will be adjusted as such. We can also drag from the side and our shape will be horizontally I'll undo that, or vertically scaled. If we want a uniform scale, all we need to do again, let's hold our control key down, and let's click and drag, but instead of just holding our control key, let's press our shift key. Notice straight away that our shape scales proportionately. Let's undo that. One more thing. Let's do the same thing. Let's hold our control key and our shift key to have a proportionate scale. But this time around, let's press the alt key along with it. So we're going to be holding down our control, shift, and alt key. Right away, you'll notice that our shape scales from the center and it is proportionate. Let's undo that. Now we can also hold a different combination. If we want to scale from the middle, but we don't want a proportionate scale, you got it. We hold our control and our alt key down together. Notice again, we're scaling from the center and it is a non-proportionate scale. Now we can do the same thing with our selection tool. If we click our selection tool, notice straight away that our scale shape appears around it. Without holding anything, we can click and drag from the side. We'll undo that. From the corner, we'll undo that. Hold our shift key, proportionately scale. We'll undo that. Or holding our shift and alt key down, we'll proportionately scale from the center. We'll undo that. Last but not least, we can always hold our alt key down and we're scaling from the center non-proportionately. Let's undo that one last time. We're done. So there you have it. A quick note, with these and all Illustrator tools, take the time out and see how to get the most out of them. Press the function key, the control key, the alt key, just to take a look, see what's up. With that in mind, we are done. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like, I'd really appreciate that. As usual, I'd appreciate it just a little bit more if you subscribe. We'll see you 
next time. See you.